Howdy and welcome back to Celebrating Vintage Model Kits. Today we've got another wood kit, this time a Hawk kit of the P61 Black Widow in quarter inch scale or 148 scale. This kit was produced in 1944 during the war and uh, kind of a unique boxing for this kit. So uh, let's take a look at what we got here. So the first thing to notice is you got this nice rendition of a Black Widow in the middle of a spider web and this spider web I don't know how well you can tell on the video uh, this is a silver uh, printing on here to give this uh, spider web look which I think is pretty darn cool it's about the the coolest boxing I've seen of any of these wood kits then yeah hell it's Pretty darn cool for even modern kits. So on the side here, we just got simple Black Widow. Opposite side, Black Widow. And on the end, a little hard to get in here, Black Widow, manufactured by Hawk Model Company of Chicago, Illinois. And same thing on that side. And nothing on the bottom, just a simple box. So uh, Hawk uh, was uh, established in 1928 by a couple of brothers, uh, Dick and Phil Mates, in Chicago, Illinois. Um, they're sometimes called uh, uh, America's uh, oldest model company. Uh, when uh, they first started, they were just making mainly solid wood kits. Uh, I think a little bit of stick and tissue kits as well, but mainly solid woods. And in uh, 1934, uh, they exhibited a uh, built and painted uh, plastic model kit at the uh, World's Fair there. So the beginnings of uh, the plastic uh, model airplane uh, field, in fact, basically plastic model kits in general, uh, Hawk uh, had introduced some plastic parts uh, around this time period as well, one of the first to, to do that. And then uh, 1946, they produced one of the very first uh, publicly, you know, sold uh, plastic kit. It was a Curtis R3C racer, uh, also in uh, quarter scale, 148th inch scale. Um, that was an acetate plastic. Uh, they did it three or four other of the uh, 30s racers, a GB, a Super Rain uh, racer. And then in uh, 1949, they switched to polystyrene. Eventually, uh, Hawk uh, produced a whole line of plastics stopped making their woods and uh, eventually in 1970 they were bought by testers and some of their their molds are still available in fact we've reviewed a few of their plastic kits uh, in previous videos so let's take a look at what you got from a hot kit in 1944 so again you got uh, the lithograph is glued onto the outside of the box i don't know if this is a cheaper wartime cardboard but uh, it's pretty pretty flecked up and got a piece of tissue in here, which I think is just for packing, because you don't need tissue to build this kit. I think this is just to help keep stuff from floating around. And let's take a look at their instruction sheet. Printed on nice uh, glossy slip paper. And it's a color Sheet. A little hard to get the whole thing in here. So there's a little information down here. So this is uh, drawn by Phil Mates, one of the uh, founders, uh, dated October 1944. Looks like this was kit number 100, Hawk Model Company in Chicago. So here's your scale to feet down here. And pretty nice drawing of the aircraft. Wooden doesn't look to be quite shaped correctly. I think the fuselage is a little narrower or the wings are a little higher on it. This could be the, the early short radome nosed version. But uh, pretty nice drawing with a lot of details. more 
detail information. Pratt & Whitney Twin Moss, Hydromatic Props. 50 cal machine guns. Interesting, it doesn't mention the uh, cannons in the belly. But a pretty nice uh, instruction sheet. This would be, actually would look nice framed on a wall. And unlike some of the other kits where they're showing you the uh, templates on the plans themselves, Hawk has given you a separate card with the templates pre-cut, which is kind of nice. So it's showing you where to put them, where they match up on the fuselage parts and the wings. Pretty nice. Only decals you get are star and bars. They're pretty well worn out. It's like a little silver fished. And there's the ones for the booms. And plastic props. I think it's pretty neat they come on this card here to keep them somewhat protected. pretty decent props so this is kind of a cross between what we saw with the first uh, wood kit and the last one that we just looked at where it is pre-cut but it's not shaped very well so this is an all balsa kit so you've got your booms that's your just square cut so do a lot of shaping of those. You got your central pod fuselage. Good profile, but everything else is square. So a lot of shaping on this. Got your tail plane. One solid piece. And your wings cut to the shape, but no, no airfoil to them at all. Tail planes. Again, cut the shape with no airfoil to them. A little dowel here. I'm assuming this is probably to make the guns or maybe the uh, landing gear. You do get some nice hardwood turned engines and cow wings. And you also do get some hardwood turned wheels. Got the main wheels. The nose wheel, kind of generic looking. And then this is probably for making the turret on the top. And then you get a wire stand. And again, this looks like uh, some pretty cheap cardboard probably. Wartime production cardboard. So that's about it for this kit. So kind of a cross between the just plain solid blocks of wood and uh, the ones that have a little bit of shaping done to them, a little bit of turned parts. This one does have some shape cut into it. But it is nice you do get the plastic props, which is a lot better than what the other kit was making them out of basically toothpicks. So the uh, this kit came out in 1948. Was Black Widow was first coming out in the service, so this is a pretty hot plane. There were a number of uh, people that were making them. Uh, 48 scale was also produced by Douglas, Maircraft, and Falcon. In 159 scale, uh, Eagle. 164 scale Comet, 172 by Gillows, uh, part of their uh, shelf model series of solids. There's a 179th uh, by Eagle, another uh, one from Eagle, 183rd by Continental slash Empire, 199th by Miguel, and a 1113th by Supreme, like we saw in that previous video. 
And then finally, Strombecker, uh, all, all those other ones were, were basically wartime produced kits or 44, 45, maybe 46. Probably continued producing them up through the early 50s. And then Strombecker brought out a kit in 1953, which uh, was uh, uh, part of that last group of Strombecker kits, which were really, really finely made out of uh, really nicely shaped hard wood, a lot of plastic parts. And uh, we'll be seeing uh, that kit in the future as well. So that's about it. Not a whole lot with these. On our outro, uh, there's this was only released once, so there's there's no other boxes to show you for this kit. But I'll show you what some of the other boxings for uh, for the P61 from some of the competitors look like. So that's about it. Uh, again, if you've made a, a solid wood kit, uh, let us know in the uh, comment section. If you built this one in particular, that'd be even better. Uh, if you've uh, got one still on your shelf that you've built, you want to take some pictures of it, send it in for our uh, viewer build videos. That'd be fantastic as well. So that's about it for today. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great day.